We're going to read part two of the rules and regulations that were given out on Friday, or actually Monday of last week. This is talking about it's got to be turned in by May the 8th, which is coming up. So make sure you fill that in and turn it into the office, which are, most of you have already done that, I'm sure. So even in your place, it may be a guideline that's similar to this. But anyway, now I want to say something about up here when we were talking about um, resident complaint and grievance procedures. The reason why you should send a copy to Knoxville office is in case the management here may try to you know, try to take something you said out of context or try to embellish something to try to make you look like you're crazy or try to lie or falsify things. Now, some complexes, you may have managers that are scrupulous. And they usually here, the management here is pretty good. But, you know, some places where you live, you may not fare as well. So that's why it's so important to follow that procedure, to send a copy of your grievances, told all the stuff you said there, to send exactly a copy to them to that address to Knoxville, Tennessee. That's why they want you to do that. But see, first you do this first, and if it don't work out, your response is unsatisfied or they're not responding at all, and they're just ignoring the issue altogether, then you send this out to Knoxville, and then they get involved because they're here to help you, you know. All right, now, all residents are responsible for ensuring their personal belongings and property for the lost or damaged items. It says the owner's insurance... Uh, the property coverage is not responsible for damage, damage that's done to your belong, personal belongings. It says a uh, detailed list of your valuables should be available with a description of the item, like a picture of it, like serial numbers of your electronics and your cars and things like that, and other property, and any other information should be attained and kept separately or separate from other valuable papers or important papers. We strongly do recommend that you retain insurance to protect you against, um, protect your belongings and your, um, and also to provide liability coverage for all your property in your apartment. Okay. Since all personal property that is placed on on the very premise should be at the very risk of the resident or the owner of the person who owns that property, okay? So neither American Apartment Management Company, Inc., or the property is responsible for your articles that are left, that are left with any employee or employees or contractors that enter into your apartment. Your safety, protection of, of residents and their property, is of great concern and um, um, to management. It says be sure to make or to make or take use of any locks. All right, to ensure that you don't have uninvited persons coming into your unit. All right, so always lock your doors. In other words, when you're in your unit at night, especially and even during the day, uh, you cannot. They cannot gain access. So just always close and lock your doors, okay? And windows, especially if you're on downstairs, it's important to lock your windows because they can climb in. If you're on upstairs, it's kind of hard to do that. Let's say I have a ladder, but that would make a lot of noise. And so a lot of times they're not going to break into an upstairs unit, but they will break into a lower unit. So make sure you lock those windows and doors if you're not there. Or, you know, if you're going to bed, lock them. All right? Also, we want you, uh, what they want you to do is also be aware of your surroundings, and be aware of any um, suspicious or uh, unexpected um, deliveries that come to your door. This is like a trick or an attempt to gain access to your apartment. You know, so professional thieves can gain entry into your apartment unit. So make sure you're aware of that. If you didn't order anything, don't answer the door. It says the office must have your home and work telephone numbers. All right, please report your phone number. To the management, or please inform them about your phone number if there is a known or if it has changed, all right? In case there is an emergency like a fire or flood or robbery that has been done to your property or uh, to another unit that may have damaged your unit, says we need to be able to get in contact or touch with you um, immediately if this happens, Okay. These numbers will be kept in confidence and confidential 
says the office um, personnel cannot provide a residence apartment or phone numbers to anyone who comes here to ask. So please be sure to tell all your guests or visitors that they have all this information, okay? says no one will be um, admitted to your apartment without prior written per uh, permission from you first, okay? says use of having, if you have, or use of having a firearm of any kind, says will not be allowed outside of your apartment on, on the community property including a BB gun or air rifles, etc. It says any, any rifle should be discharged of any um, firearm should be discharged. If it's, if it's discharged, meaning if it's fired on the property or in your apartment is strictly not allowed. Okay? Vis all visitors will be prosecuted, and it could be a lease violation too. And also, you could be subject to fines and maybe even legal could be locked up too as well. All right. Now, if there are any solic if there are solicitors that do come to your door or appear on you on the property grounds or premises, the office should be notified immediately of this. Okay. If you are if you see any suspicious strangers walking around, or any unusual activities or happenings going around the building of your property or inside the community, please notify the office or report it to your local police department and also tell management too in all cases. But contact the police first and then let them know about it after you have called the cops. All right, now you should um, retain the, you should re retain the right to control and also prevent access to the building and the grounds, okay, to persons who, uh, with sufficient cause, all right. Now, it considers to be a, um, that seems to be, you should not allow anybody to come to your apartment if they consider to be undesirable, like if they're, I don't know, if they seem to be mean or violent or trying to be forcefully trying to get into your apartment, you need to stop them, okay, don't just let them come in. All right, because they can rape you or something or do damage to you or your belongings or shoot you. You know, don't open the door if you don't recognize them, okay? All right, residents and their guests should make every attempt and effort to ensure that all doors remain locked at all times during designated hours. It says no um, resident is to use any emergency exits if they're on the property, except if in case there is an actual emergency, okay, we don't have those here, but some properties do. So this was sent out by HUD, all right, and retained by the owner of the property because they 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 own a lot of properties, all right. This pertains key and locks. It says a key, all right, to your apartment unit or room, I mean the laundry room. And your mailbox will be supplied to each and every resident or head of the household. That means each and every head of the household, I meant to say, you know, at the time you move in. It says all keys are to be returned, right, this is important, to the office upon vacating the apartment. So be going leaving the apartment is what that means. It says res all residents are not permitted or allowed to alter any of their locks or to install any new, um, you know, types of features like alarms or things of that nature, unless you get written approval uh, for them, okay? Um, that's just so important. Okay, um, let's see what said, or other attachments of any kind, all right? Or windows without prior written permission from your management team or management of the apartment. It says, please make sure that all members of your household have a key to enter the apartment and also keep this key with them at all times. Okay? All right. No one will be allowed to borrow a key at any time. 
says, we are not permitted or allowed to give any keys out to anyone who comes here. It says, a fee of $30 will be assessed or charged to you, you know, if management is called out to unlock a door before or after regular business hours. That's between, here it's between 9 and 5, or 4, 9 and 4, okay? And on weekends, a fee of 15, wait a minute, I read that wrong. Or in on weekends, okay, a fee of fifteen dollars will be assessed um, or charged to unlock a particular door of a unit during business hours. Okay, so when the office, it's it's when and if the office is open. It says a fee of uh, sec sectal cost per lock. So if you want to add a couple locks to your door, you can. If you get permission by the management, you have to pay for each lock that they approve to add to your door. I mean, you can't just put any lock on there. We'll be charged to change that lock or to install a lock. It says if they, you know, at residence request. All right. Consider um, damage that is done to that lock or the loss of any keys to that lock. All right. Number 12. All right, vehicles pertains to vehicles and parking areas. All residents and their guests are to park their vehicles in the designated parking areas as posted. Okay, only in attained parking permits from the management team where they are applicable if they are required. Some places don't require that, so check with your apartment area. If you live in a public area, remember I said different places require different things. Some don't, some do. All right, please also observe the open, the, the speed limits that have been posted on the signs and on the properties, okay? It says there is ample parking spaces that are available for all residents as well as their guests, okay? It says residents and their guests should not park in areas that are designated as fire lanes at any point of time. Designated areas have been reserved for these fire lanes, okay? It says mobility, mobility required parking areas. Don't park there unless you have a handicap sticker that hangs down from your mirror in your car and you have special plates, decals on your car, etc. It says only residents and their guests whose vehicles have a handicap designation seal or decal or hangs from the mirror or owners, uh, wait a minute, regulation may park in these designated handicap parking areas. It says all vehicles that are parked in posted areas will be towed away at the owner's, meaning your expense, owner's expense without liability to the property, okay, meaning it won't, it won't affect them. All motorcycles, bicycles are not to be parked uh, in breezeways, if you have those, or on sidewalks, okay. It says on the lawn or near the, any building. It says park motorcycles in parking lot spaces where, they're, where the parking lots are available. <coughs> or the designated. It says only bicycles can be kept up in your apartment or secured if you have it on your grounds, a bicycle rack, which I have not seen here on our property. Okay, it says where they are available. It says recreational, uh, commercial, or park vehicles are not to be kept on the premises without prior written approval from the management team. It says during during the, the the winter months, please make sure to remember to park your vehicle so that the bumper does not extend over the sidewalks, because that could be a trip hazard. Okay. Now, regarding washing any vehicles on the grounds of the property or premises is not allowed. Okay, minor maintenance. Of your very vehicle is per minute, which means you're allowed to do minor maintenance, okay? Uh, minor um, maintenance includes, they go ahead and define this for you, checking but not changing of any fluids, okay? It says replacement of a flat tire 
or the replacement of any light bulbs on your car. Okay? Or the use of jumper cables. That's permitted. It's allowed. Okay? Okay? Now, major, any major maintenance, which we consider all items that are not listed of what we read above, is prohibited, meaning not allowed. Okay? Vehicles that are what? that are inoperable without any current licenses or decals or inspection stickers on them or you know I've already said that license plates or have flat tires and having uh, any kind of broken you know windshields etc are considered to be immobilized and they will also be towed at the owner's expense says so after the proper notification has been served says uh, all residents are required to register their vehicles at the office and will also receive the requirement notification sticker uh, where that is applicable. So some places do require you to have a sticker to park, while other places do not. Okay. Now allowing a fluid leak onto any parking spaces or garage or wait a minute, garbage access ramps or areas or sidewalks is strictly not allowed okay and is considered a lease violation of your agreement any violators will be charged a cost to remove the fluid stains um, from the very of the property okay and to repair any damages that were incurred on the surface. All right. So any repeated violators may also result in the very termination of your lease here in this community or any public housing community. Okay. Now regarding occupancy, since only the person or persons that have been listed on the HUD um, form five five zero zero five nine are considered members of the head of household and are allowed allowed to live in this apartment unit or in your apartment unit since all planned changes in your household composition must be reported to the management team immediately okay now all residents are not permitted meaning not allowed to have the same individual or individuals as overnight guests. Now, this is something you need to look at. For more than a total of a seven-day period and a six-month period. Like, for example, that would mean like January through June or July through December. Okay? It says, without any written approval or permission from the management team, says a visit is considered to be no longer than a period of seven days in a duration, meaning at one time or within a six-month period. Okay, if that makes it clearer and understand, easier to understand. It says visits with an anticipated um, duration that is more than seven days must have prior written permission from the management team. Okay. All right. So any adherence or any absences from your unit within an axis of a 30 day period without any written or advanced written notifications to your management team uh, could result or could constitute abandonment and could lead to legal actions that may be uh, initiated. Okay. Number 14, resident liability. What you're responsible for in your apartment. The head of the household must be responsible for the very conduct and actions of all household members and their very guests. Okay. And will be held liable for their very actions. This is in order to ensure their safety. It says each household has been asked to help in 
explaining these very guidelines to their guests, if applicable, and children of their guests. You know, that way they understand the rules, and that way they know what is permissible, what, what the rules say. And that way, you know, if they do something wrong, you are responsible. And you will be in trouble if they don't follow the rules of the property. So it's so important to follow these things. It says, all children who are not members of the tenant's household must be accompanied by an adult at all times, I think they should put that, while on the property or premise. All right. Means running in hallways or playing in elevators, if applicable, is not allowed. Okay. Or not prohibited. Okay. Which means the same thing. And not in the breezeways. I mean, not allowed to run around. So it's only play where designated players are list are posted or where they're available. It says, because of all the confined play areas, it says playing ball is not permitted outside of those areas. In parking lots, or hallways, or driveways, or in the stairs areas, or any entrance ways. It says, in or around the management office facility, or in laundry room areas, okay, or not considered appropriate play areas, okay, or any climbing of trees or on the stairs or on the railings. It says playing on uh, shrubs or in the flower beds on the property is not allowed. Okay, Any damage that is incurred by any landscaping will be billed or charged to the tenant that lives in that building. If they know that that's your guest that violates this. Okay, Any markings or any other damage that due to any part of the building, inside or out, or fences, or sidewalks, or uh, play equipment that's on the property, is not allowed. So they can't write. It says all, you know, a draw or paint or anything on the property. It says all residents are finally responsible for any property damages that is caused by themselves or their guests as being a result of that damage. Okay. So while um, moving in or moving out of the building, all residents are responsible for any damages that is incurred to the floors, the doors, walls, um, the weather. Let's see. Whether such damage is located in their apartment or in the public access areas of the building. Okay. Now, pet policy fifteen. In this policy, some complexes do not allow pets, but in this one, they do. Pets are allowed. There is a pet agreement, and it must be um, executed between the resident and the property owner of the property. Now, if the pets are not allowed, um, there does not. There's no service charge or, or you know, deposit or commit or. No, there's no animals that are allowed if you're on a property where it does not allow that. But in, on this property, they do allow pets. All right. Visitors are not allowed to bring pets on the property. Now, there's a reason for that because they could get in a fight with another pet or could bite another person here and it could cause all kinds of legal heartaches and a lot of problems with, you know, could cause problems with you being here too as well. All facilities, now this is talking about amenities, like, you know, all facilities have been provided for all tenants and residents' pleasure or use. Okay, management reserves the total sole right to close any of these uh, amenities or facilities for performing maintenance and cleaning tasks. It says any use of all facilities at the residence is at their own risk. All right. So reservations for activities in, um, in the public or in common ground areas must be made through the management. Okay. Now laundry equipment is also owned and operated by a commercial company who is also responsible for any repairs that needs to be made to it. 
or maintenance that needs to be performed. Uh, it says, of your laundry room or equipment. It says, if a machine is malfunctioning or is not acting like it should, please contact the owner of the equipment, which is listed on the equipment or posted in there in the laundry room area, whose number has been posted in, okay, I've already said that. It says, identify, tell them about the type of machine or the machine that's having the problem, and then also talk, tell a little detail about it. And any other information that you can provide that describes the problem should also be reported to the management. All right, for your very protection and your operational convenience, all right, refrain from placing any kind of plastic items in the dryer because these items can ignite and catch on fire or combust and cause damage to the room and to the machine and to the building. It says, do not overload machines with overload with too many clothes or belongings because that can do damage to the machine. It says, please prowl all posted operational instructions and procedures carefully when operating the machines and equipment in the laundry room facility. It says, never leave clothes uh, unattended. It says, management is not responsible for any lost or stolen items that you've left unattended in the laundry room area. It says, the laundry... Uh, facility room facilities are provided for the residents convenience okay please treat all facilities as your very own personal items with care and please keep all larger room um, areas clean meaning wiping off all machines after each and every use and please place all empty detergent and bleach containers in the proper trash designated receptacles were provided. It says, if your community has a community clubhouse or multi-purpose room area, swimming pool, weight room, or other facilities and uh, that, are, that have not been mentioned here in this packet, it says, in the house rules or also in the house rules and regulations, um, says your signature when you sign, you know, that scare me, when you sign um, the supplementary forms has also been required to have use or to take use of these facilities. So you're responsible for it. Number 17, community appearance. Okay, please keep this in mind um, to help us ensure the very appearance of your uh, community. It also reflects that it always reflects the best as, as it appears to be. It says, we are very proud of our very community. And we, are, we want to encourage you to keep this type of uh, pride of this community. Okay? And our, and our resident, all our residents, um, you know, any resident clutter that is um, unsightly on balconies or in common breezeways or areas or on stairways and in any windows in your apartment. Um, no yard sales or any porch sales are allowed, you know, without prior written permission that has been approved from management. Because there's only any furniture that has, the only furniture that's, designated or designed for a patio or balcony is allowed outside or prohibited outside. All right. So no resident signs or advertisements are allowed. All right. All right. Care of your apartment. I disagree with this. It's not an apartment. It's a unit. It's an apartment, not a home. Okay. Man, all management does require for all residents to maintain a safe, sanitary, and damage-free environment in their apartment unit. So your apartment has been um, deemed and also maintained, or uh, yeah, maintenance has been it has been maintained, but also maintenance has also been performed prior to your moving in and taking occupancy of the unit. All ma management will perform a move-in inspection at the time you move in with the resident 
to ensure that all the apartment is in proper and working order and in the right condition. It says upon a satisfactory an inspection, an inspection form will be signed by both parties, both you, the manager, and the tenant, the lease tenant, signifying of uh, the condition, uh, the very condition of your apartment unit um, as being acceptable. Okay. All right. When decorating, use only small like tack nails or any pictures that you have. Do not use any type of adhesive, you know, such as, um, you know, hangers or large nails to make uh, excessive holes in your walls, okay? It says minor tile or any type of mild, you know, any type of, you know, sticky contact paper or wallpaper, etc., with any type of glue or adhesive that, um, that's backing, it has a backing, meaning it sticks to the wall, is not allowed. It's not permitted uh, to be used in your unit. Okay? So we'll make sure you understand these rules, okay? Because they're very, very clear about that. Now, that, that actually is in the lease agreement. And a lot of these are the same, just a few that we pointed out earlier are questionable. I suspect it's suspicion, that's the kind of word that was used on the marijuana. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. But see, when you read it, if it is illegal, it's talking, it does say illegal. If it is illegal, then you will be, um, you will have to deal with that. Now, okay, do not apply these things with sticky backings to your walls or ceilings or floors. Or any, type, or any of your surfaces in your apartment or cabinets. You know, interior uh, paintings is not allowed in your apartment and will be, and will be, any kind of interior painting is not allowed to be done by you, but it will be completed by management. It says, do not make any changes or alterations to your very apartment unit without written prior, uh, written permission from your management. See, that makes that does make sense. It says keep all walls and woodwork free from any type of um, handprints, uh, ink, crown markings, stickers, and holes, uh, carpet, vinyl, um, tile, and any baseboards are to be kept clean at all times. Okay, vacuum your apartment carpet frequently, all right? It says um, any type of beverage or any type of food stains or spots can be simply cleaned and removed with a mild, with some cold water and a mild detergent, you know, soap, like dish soap or something, something mild. Uh, clean